classics, we've got the Jughead. This comes out of the Volume 2 Western Fly Tying Manual from Jack Dennis, uh, 1980. Um, let's see, we're going to start with a 3X long. This is a size 6. You can tie them in 8. Um, you could even do this one in a 4. You can do all of them in a 4, but 4 uh, is on the bigger on the bigger side. But sometimes they eat them. Um, you know, there's days where it seems like they only want big stuff, so uh, this would be a good option. Start with the thread base. I'm running 240, which may be a little big, but I don't have. Or is this 210? Uh, oh shoot, this is 280. I don't even know where I got this stuff. It's huge, but uh, I don't have any like burnt orange. I thought I did, and, and anything smaller. Normally, I'd be running 140 if I had a choice, but I don't know what I did with it. So we're g we're gonna go big. Standard elk tail. And what I like to do in these stackers is I'll just line up the butts. Since I cut the butts even, getting all these tips kind of in, this one's actually not too bad, but you know, a lot of times they'll kind of like splay out like this if you got a smaller opening. Just doing it a little bit. But since we cut the butts even, I can pinch them and I'll just run it through the bottom up. That wasn't too graceful, but you get the point and put the bottom on and that seems to be a little easier for me most of the time so let's see we'll get a uh, I always do these too thick but you know little clump there this is gonna add stability to the fly so we do want you know fairly substantial tail um, as far as uh, how much elk hair we're, we're throwing in just to uh, stabilize the fly and make sure the back is riding level with the front. So again tie all this up. I do this to create an even body. So I'll go through and trim this out. back and wrap all this down and this just helps kind of uh, keep uh, an evenness through the body so I don't have a big drop off I've got to just fill with dunning body hackle I'm gonna keep using this neck I've got this thing's pretty hammered but uh, I've got a lot of good feathers on here still, and if I don't use them for salmon flies, they'll just never get used. So, so originally, uh, you know, if we're gonna go original, original style here, we tie it in from the base instead of the tip. Just a brown hackle. And tie this all the way up. That's a good idea at this point to give a pull. Make sure this isn't going to break. You know, like maybe even do like a wrap just to see. Sometimes you get stems that maybe have a little split in them that you can't necessarily see. And you, you learn about it the first wrap, you know. Especially down here in this base, it can be a little brittle. Um, being so thick, especially on this one. I mean, this saddle or this next probably, gosh, I don't know, like five years old, you know. So um, the stem may be a little brittle, and if that's the case, we just want to know right now before we we put our body on, because once you're up to, you know, your body's done and you go to wrap, then you got to redo everything. So it's a good idea on this kind of stuff just to test it now, and then you know if you need to grab a new hackle. Uh, the body originally calls for either wool or poly yarn. Um, Again, I'm going to use dubbing just for sake of color. Um, if I could find a poly yarn that I really like the orange of, I would use that. Um, and it would also probably aid in flotation a little bit since it's a floating yarn, but they just don't have many colors. Poly yarn's not real popular anymore, so you just don't get the color range that we used to. 
So I'm dubbing on uh, Burnt Orange. Uh, this is Trilobal. Uh, I think, what is this? Yeah, Burnt Orange STS Trilobal. Uh, really good color actually for this. I'll just keep it keep it kind of thin. I just dub it a little bit at a time. This this stuff doesn't like to be overdubbed. It's not the easiest stuff in the world to work with. Um, it's pretty slippery. You know, it's not a real um, grippy dubbing to the thread, if that makes sense. It's like a, you know, it's a, it's a full synthetic that's cut kind of short. So if you don't put it on thin, it's just going to roll off. Okay. So we're going to roll... Uh, for measurement's sake, we'll say we'll measure the gap of the hook to the body, and that's about where we want to be to leave room for the head. The head's going to be a spun deer here. We'll wrap our hackle up. Tie it off. Even spacing here. And we're going to trim just the top. I'm going to leave the sides and the bottom. For the wing, we're going to use natural squirrel, or I'm sorry, natural fox squirrel rather. And I'm kind of getting low in my mid section here where I've been using you know for years uh, so we're gonna go on the high side here it's probably due to pick one up actually I might try to salvage what I can from the bottom if I can get it long enough we'll see and the only reason I'm doing that is just because I like the color variegation I like all the color variegation on the bottom a little more we're going to comb through it and get all these little dudes out. You can see everything I just pulled out of there just with one comb swipe. Throw it in the stacker. And we're going to see where we are for length. I don't know if we're going to make it or not. Let's see. Yeah, we're going to make it. Just barely going to make it. I'm going to just tiny, tiny bit longer than the tail here. Okay, and I'm just going to make a couple wraps. Good tight wraps up towards the base. Come down here, trim these butts. Remember, you want to trim them at an angle. So we can see we're all layered. This is all layered. It's not a straight chop. It's an angle cut. So all these tips are exposed. You can either put Zappa Gap on your thread or just throw it on the butts here. And then wrap them all down, and that's going to ensure that we get everything really nice and locked in. And again, at this point, you just want to give this a pull. See, this is moving the hook up and down. That's a good sign. You don't want to you know, pull it now, because if you just pull it and it comes out, then you know um, you just got to redo the wing. So now for the um, tedious part of the fly, but the fly that, or but the part that kind of makes the fly, uh, we're gonna spin the head up. I'm just using regular deer hair, uh, nothing fancy. I don't know. I mean, this is deer body hair, uh, but as far as like if it was like a winter deer or summer deer, I have no idea. I'm just gonna spin it. It's important to comb when you're spinning this to comb out all this fluff. 
it'll spin much easier for you. So I've got my clump here. I'm not going to worry about stacking it. I'm just going to take a loose wrap, real loose. Come back up top and start pulling it kind of tight. And you can see as I pull, it all comes together. Push it back real hard. Try to move it up. Move the thread forward. I'm going to do this again. Lay it on top. The second one is always a little trickier. So up. Bring it down. Keep wrapping. And just kind of go through it. All right, and tie her off. Gosh, this whip finisher, I forgot this is my problem child. For whatever reason, it's just all funky, and I might have just screwed this whole thing up. See if we can get that come back here. I gotta throw that thing away. I don't know why I'm still using it. Oh, do I have a backup? All right, backup. So this is how we fix things that happen. So push it all back. Get us back into orientation here. This thing's going in the garbage right now. Struggling. Let's just get a knot on there. Push it all back. All right, now that we're all kind of tidied up here, we can actually make a good knot. Man. Okay. That was ridiculous. So I'm gonna take all this deer hair and bring it up towards the front. See if we can get it all forward. There'll be a couple, you know, in there that you can't really get. The easiest way to do this is with the razor blade. One of these double siders that, you know, you can buy them at most fly shops. And I'll come in here even straight on the bottom. Make a cut. Trying really hard not to cut this hackle. Alright, looks like we did our job there. So that was straight cut right at the bottom. And I'm going to bow the razor blade. And now I'm going to go kind of up and over like a muddler head kind of like so I'm going to start at an angle to get the tips short and then I'm going to work my way over okay that's a good start I'm going to do that again 
Now we know kind of where we're at, so we can just do it again. I'm not the best at trimming deer hair, obviously. Okay, so the rest I'm going to just trim with scissors because I really am afraid to get a hold of the squirrel wing. Okay, I think we're looking, we're getting there here. Just give her kind of a back trim. All right. And you could spend, I mean, you can spend a while cleaning this up if you want to. I might just do a little bit more. The goal here is to make sure that this rides flat. And by making your first cut directly flat on the bottom, it will let this fly ride just super low, right? Like it'll just always land with the hook down, the fly down. Um, you could add some rubber legs to this. I think that would add, you know, quite a bit, but, you know, classic pattern, man. They didn't have, you know, I mean, hell, if they wanted rubber legs and an 80 for this, they're even, or, I mean, they're probably using rubber bands, you know. There wasn't any, really much of anything like that yet. So, anyway, there it is, the jug head. Um, cool little fly, um, you know, straight out of West Yellowstone, and, uh, you know, the guys over in the Jack Dennis crew says it's a good one, man. You got to believe them. So, there's the Jack head. Thanks for watching. Mm -hmm.